you have talked a lot about the digital divide. For those people that may not know what the digital divide is, can you explain what the challenge is with the digital divide? There's tremendous benefits that accrue to anybody who has access to the internet. Those benefits accrue either in terms of the, the wonderful things that they're able to do in their life every day, whether it's to hail a ride to go someplace or watch entertainment. Uh, they accrue to how you manage your health and your medical needs. They accrue to your ability to participate in the economy, to either work or search for work. Uh, they accrue to your ability to be educated. And so, you know, from a digital divide perspective, the notion is anybody who doesn't have access to the full complement of capabilities that the internet can extend to an individual, maybe is somebody who's on the other side of the divide, or we should be concerned about from a societal perspective, because they're not fully participating in our economy and the benefit of great health and the, all the benefits of society that can carry forward. That number is somewhere in the area of 17 million households that either can't afford to take advantage of both a wireless connection and a fixed connection in their life, or in some cases in rural America, don't have a you know, capable enough infrastructure to be able to actually get a scaled broadband connection that allows them to do all the things that many of us who live in more urban or suburban areas take for granted. And so the digital divide issue is how as a society do we think about making sure all Americans get access to the scaled kind of connectivity they need and that we do that in the most efficient way. And it's really, I think, one of the great marquee infrastructure projects that we can think about because, well, it might cost us some money to do that as a society and as US taxpayers, but I believe if done right, the benefit that comes in reduced medical costs, the benefit that comes in economic growth, the benefit that comes in employment that allows people to build that infrastructure and ultimately maintain it and carry forward will far outstrip what we have to invest to ultimately have this done. And we'll have a probably a more peaceable and a more inclusive society as a result of that. The president has proposed a $65 billion uh, for um, broadband in his new uh, infrastructure bill. Are you supportive of that? Well, we're supportive. I think the administration is very wise to be pursuing an objective to bring every American on the internet. You know, we invest just to sustain the growth in our business and kind of run it as it is today, somewhere between 22 and $24 billion every year. And so when you think about that within the context of the broader industry, what 60 to $80 billion maybe solves done correctly probably deals with the rural America problem and, and knocks that out. And that's not necessarily doing it by putting fiber to every household. That's using all the tools that technology can offer, whether it be satellite, wireless, maybe in some instances, more fixed fiber infrastructure to get robust enough infrastructure out to a rural subscriber. We really need to step back from that and think about a new policy. There's two ways to probably deal with that. One might be through direct appropriations. If you don't go down that path, you need to think about building a ways to get excise taxes or use taxes back that's substantial enough to pay for it. And the way I think about that is if you don't do direct appropriations, which may be the most quick and efficient way to deal with that, then you better make sure you have a very broad base of how you collect those usury fees in order to make sure everybody has the right degree of subsidy. And that really should be done across all of industry that benefits from the internet. And we really need to think about probably being somewhere in the range of, my guess, about $4 billion a year of direct subsidy that goes into those that can't afford it. And if we wanted to have a conversation around what that price needs to be to ultimately get people to make a decision to buy a more scaled broadband connection, that's probably a whole nother conversation that's important to have. So uh, under the president's proposal, um, municipalities are being uh, incented to actually own uh, broadband facilities, which is different than what we normally have, which is private companies on them. Do right, you support the, the pre president's proposal to have municipalities own broadband facilities? You know, their job is to deliver water, patch streets, things like that, not being a capital intensive technology business that requires constant refresh and constant management. 
why would we want to go overbuild in areas where there's already great infrastructure that is probably, if you think about this pandemic and look around the globe and what occurred, has functioned incredibly well for the vast majority of citizens in the United States and waste subsidy to go and overbuild that infrastructure. It seems like the better move would be, let's make sure every piece of subsidy that we put in place is either getting somebody on the internet who doesn't have facilities and access to do that or subsidizing those that can't afford it, not, not overbuild it. And so I don't believe that that policy is really practical. And I actually believe that most policymakers that are in the sausage making right now are seeing that and are probably steering this in a, a more pragmatic direction.